I think. <laughs> oh boy. I think Proverbs 1 4 was designed just for me. As we've been going through Proverbs, we've discovered that Proverbs are to do something. It, they're meant to be an action that you're going to do. It's something that's pro, not con. It's something that's positive in doing rather than negative in saying not to do something. So in a lot of studies, you're going to find most people will tell you, oh, you know, there's always a reversal, you know, in the Eastern mindset. There's this Jewish way of looking at it. You know, there's this perspective that you have to have. <laughs> really. If you looked around, I think if you're watching this video, some of you are probably in the West, and some of you are probably in the North, and some of you are in the South, and some of you are in the East. What kind of mindset do I have to have? I think God has a mindset when he wrote the book. I think God was the initiator by his Holy Spirit of causing people to understand what it was that was being said at the time because they recorded it for us. I think it's God by the Holy Spirit that helps us, that causes us to apply to us the Word of God as it becomes real for us. Otherwise, why have the book in the first place? Why not just be a Jew or be a who knows what? Go into the Middle East and pick your religion. There's a lot of them there. The point being is that God applies what we read to us as we hear it, as we understand it, as he uses his Holy Spirit to work in us so that we would not have to add all these extra quote-unquote Hebraic roots or Jewish roots or hermeneutic or homiletic or theological premise in order to have a comprehension that God is the one speaking to us. Let's get back to the simple, folks. <laughs> it doesn't take a genius, and you don't have to have you don't have to have to have a King James. You can have any Bible you want. Frankly, God's going to get through to you by His Spirit, not by your intellect. Proverbs three five and six tells us that right off the bat. So go read that first before you get too carried away about how smart you got to be, how dumb you might think you are, and how whatever it is that confuses you about it. All you got to do is read it. So let's get to Proverbs 1, 4, and what's it say? To give subtlety to the simple. Oh, boy. There we go. <laughs> right up my alley. I could use a little subtlety, and nobody accused me of not being simple-minded, at least at one point in my life. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge, and discretion. You see, that's what Proverbs is going to do. The young man who wants to maybe learn something and be wiser than those who have not learned from their personal experiences may take this book and say, hey, you know what? I want to learn something. I want to know what there is by making an application of the fact. I will see knowledge and then as I gain experience, then I will become wise because that's what wisdom is. It's the application of experience plus knowledge that makes it wisdom. It's also by way of the Holy Spirit using those things and constructing them so that we would understand what it was that wisdom is, which really is a fruit of the Spirit. You know, is that it, it's from the Word of God made real to us by the experience of the Holy Spirit demonstrating to us God working in our lives. So, as we read it, recognize that there's something more to the book than just what we're reading, but rather what we're hearing as God speaks to us through it. Because you want knowledge. You want to have the subtlety that you'll need for the simple, because sometimes if a man uses subtlety in a quiet, simple, humble way, he will be thought wise. If a man uses subtlety, then he need not worry about what others are doing, but rather he would just consider them as he waits to see 
what they are doing and whether it be wise or not. Subtlety is not always a deceptive word, but rather it can be a word to say, let's not be so overt or obvious about things, but let's be circumspectful. Let's think about things first. So that he would be, for the simple one, understanding that he doesn't need to know everything, but needs to understand a few principles. So the simple can learn and know from the Lord in Proverbs what wisdom is and be considered as wise. And as he goes on, you may find that the simple is a lot more complicated than you think it is. And the complicated is made simple. To the young man, knowledge is a very precious gift because he really doesn't have enough experience to be wise, but he does have enough knowledge to argue and debate. So sometimes he may be arguing in a unknowledgeable way, but Proverbs reassures every young person, whether it be young in young man, young child, young adult, young elder, or young in the Lord as far as being born again. You're assured to be given in the book of Proverbs that knowledge that would lead you to what? Discretion. Oh, subtlety and discretion. Knowledge and wisdom. Hmm. That will bring you to a place in the next verse, as we'll see in the next lesson, of how God makes a wise man to become wise. It is through the book of Proverbs. One through four has demonstrated what the book of Proverbs gives us as we read it, as we understand it, as we let it lead us, guide us, teach us, and instruct us in the way to become not just knowledgeable and not just wise, not just smarts in the heads and not just hmm, how to order our lives, but rather it's going to teach us how to be a sage. You see, Jesus at a very young age came to the temple and he reasoned with the elders there and they were marveled at his doctrine because he had studied because he knew and he had applied because he was human the book of Proverbs to his life in an early age as he considered how a young man should order his days and how a young man should attain unto wisdom. We're told by the word of God that the way we do that is through the doing of the word, which is what Proverbs gives us an example of how to do the word in life. So what do we do with Proverbs 1-4? In subtlety, we apply knowledge so that we may become wise in the decision-making process that we apply the Word of God as we let our instructor, the Holy Spirit, interpret this book, these words, Proverbs 1 for to you today and every day that you walk, as you live in this life and as you make an action of becoming wise, part of your everyday moral integrity as well as your spiritual understanding that you might walk in a way that's pleasing in the Lord's sight and that you might give marvelous words of unbelievable insight into the scriptures simply because you read the book of Proverbs.